trying to be good in order to get God to love you, being doing uh, good, you know, doing the right things in order to get God to bless you. Understand that is honestly, it's the exact same thing. You are providing for yourself. You're not trusting in God's provision. You have to do all of these things to get God to provide for you. In other words, by my hand, I'm going to provide these things by doing this for God. And if I do this for God, then he'll have to do this for me. That's self-righteousness. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. When the fight starts, all the theories are over. We either have it or we don't. We will get hit, but we get back up. We fight to win. And one of our tactical tips I talked about when I was at a restaurant with a friend of mine and somebody stood up and said, I'm gonna kill all y'all. I didn't tell the end of the story. What actually ended up happening was is that guy was actually Baker acted that day because he'd been making threats against several others. Here's the most important thing though. A lot of times we have this idea, if they were really going to do it, they wouldn't have threatened, they would have just done it. I'm actually an active killer instructor and the majority of time when somebody commits violence, they did in fact threaten it before they actually committed it. So I encourage you, if you hear a threat of violence, report it immediately, make somebody aware of that. This is so important in this day and this hour. This is Kurt Owen with your tactical tip. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen and welcome back to Fight to Win. I'm excited to have you back today. Man, this has been a subject, honestly, that is so near and dear to my heart and this will change your life forever. And it's about knowing and believing the love that God has for you. And I strongly encourage you, if you've missed any of these, and even if you haven't, go to fighttowin.tv and listen to these things over and over again. Not only that, I strongly encourage you to uh, uh, get our free offer. We're giving away uh, Knowing and Believing the Love of God daily devotional as well. And we also have these other two series on the website. Uh, this is uh, from a meeting that we did. This is a little bit more intense. It's, it's a little bit more, um, there's a lot more in this one. And then this is God, friend, or foe. They're very, very similar, but there's a lot of stuff in here that's not covered in here. And so we'll, I, I do encourage you that. Now, right now, uh, our free offer is Knowing and Believing the Love of God Daily Devotional, okay? But I encourage you to get the rest of it because, again, there is so much that tries to steal our belief in God's love for us. There's too many things that try to convince us that God doesn't love us. And to hear these things over and over again, to feed on them every day like you do in a daily devotional, man, it's an absolute must. Now, again... We got this, if you go with me to uh, 1 John, and in 4 and in verse 16, it says, We have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Okay, so there is a difference. John is saying there is a difference between knowing about the love of God and actually believing the love of God. And we're going to have to make a decision that we're not just going to believe it, but we're, or excuse me, we're not just going to know it, but we're actually going to believe it as well. And we'll talk about how you can tell whether you're there yet, but we're not quite to that place. We've been talking about how that, that it is dangerous not to believe God's love for you. It's dangerous first because it opens you to false doctrine. Two, it opens you to... You don't really want to seek God for His will because you're afraid of what His will might mean for you as though you were God's science experiment and He's just wanting to torture you in this life. And that's not true. But now we've gotten into something else where I have to be honest, I didn't, choose, I, I didn't stop. And I'm not saying that I don't sin. I, I want to be clear with that. But there were a lot of sin in my life that I didn't quit doing uh, with rules. Um, when I, when it was a rules, thou shalt not, it seemed like I shout every day for several times a day. <laughs> and 
I remember swearing, I'm never going to do this again. And then do it three times before dark. Okay, and then, you know, I'd get spiritual about it. In the name of Jesus, I'm never going to do this again. And it seemed like I did it five times that day before dark. And things just had a hold on me. But as I began to find out about the love of God and how much God loved me, things became a love choice for me. Did I want to choose this sin? Did I want this more than I wanted him? Not that God would withdraw himself, not that God would hold anything against me, but if he really loved me the way the word says he loves me, why would I want to do anything to hurt him by choosing sin? Why would I want to do that? And once I made it a love choice, it was amazing how things, I was able to be stronger in that moment. But then I began to realize, why am, would I ever choose sin anyway? What is it about these things that I'm choosing that make them so appealing? And I finally realized one of the things and one of the main things was is because I, don't believe, I believe I have to do this for myself. I don't believe that God loves me enough to provide these things, to provide these things from protection, to provide me uh, with wisdom, to provide, you know, I don't have to steal. I've come to the place, I don't have to steal. Not that I was a big thief anyway. I did steal. I was a thief, but not, like it wasn't my profession. Like if we went, if I went to a like a high school reunion, I wouldn't have been able to say, well, what do you do, Kurt? Well, I'm a professional thief. I couldn't have said that. I was more like um, an amateur thief and things, but I did steal. So what, what is it about stealing you don't believe you can get it any other way. In other words, you don't believe that God will provide for you. And we've covered a lot of this. But look here in, in uh, Genesis, and this is where we kind of taken off from here. And in verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to him, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the tree of the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat nor shall you touch it lest you die then the servant said to the woman you shall not surely die for God knows the day you eat of it your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing good and evil in other words there's this thing about knowing good and evil and God is not going to let you have it but you know what? If you will choose sin, you can have it for yourself. You don't need to him to provide for you the knowledge of good and evil. He, you can provide it by your own hand. And honestly, this is true in a lot of different ways. As though you do not believe God loves you enough, so you must do it. It can be in pride. What about in self-righteousness? Let me talk to the religious people here for a second. Okay, all the people that you've been you know, going to a church for all these years and you spend your life trying to be good in order to get God to love you, being, doing uh, good, you know, doing the right things in order to get God to bless you. Understand that is honestly, it's the exact same thing. You are providing for yourself. You're not trusting in God's provision. You have to do all of these things to get God to provide for you. In other words, by my hand, I'm going to provide these things by doing this for God. And if I do this for God, then he'll have to do this for me. That's self-righteousness. That's, that's what that is. And I know that's appealing, right? It's, it's appealing to say we prayed for 12 hours and God did this. But the truth of the matter is, is that if God wasn't in love with you and if God didn't want to help you, you could pray all your life and you'd never get anything. This, this really is a Jesus story. This is not a you story. Okay. So we see here where they choose sin because they want this knowledge of good and evil and they do not believe, they believe that God would either withhold it from them or they believe that God would not give it to them. Now with that as a kind of a, a measuring stick, what is it in your life that you've chosen not to trust God's love for you to provide something and instead 
by your own hand you're going to make this happen. Okay. There's a lot of people that are in sin who have no idea they're in sin. In fact, they're doing a lot of things in the kingdom of God in complete sin. You want to know how I know that? Because the Word makes this statement. Anything that is not of faith is sin. I don't know about you, but I've done a lot in my life that wasn't of faith. Okay, let let, let me throw something out to you for just a second. Okay, I want you to think about this. I'm a tither. I believe in giving 10% of my income. But do you know that when I first started tithing, I was not tithing in faith. I was tithing in fear. We're going to talk a lot about fear uh, in, in another broadcast, but I was doing it because people were telling me God's going to get his money some way. He, he'll, you'll either bring it to him or he'll get it in doctor bills or he'll get it in repair bills that you need to tithe so that God doesn't just mess you up. And you want to know what? I brought my tithe. The weird part about it was is I brought my tithe in complete and absolute sin. Why? There was no faith in it. Not the least little bit. I didn't have confidence in God had already blessed me. I didn't have confidence in God's love for me. No. What did I have? I had a fear of being destroyed. And so if it's not a faith, it's, say it with me, sin. And I was actually doing something, the correct thing to do. I believe you ought to tithe. I believe it's scriptural. I believe it's New Testament to tithe. I believe that you should want to tithe, not that you should feel compelled to tithe, but you should want to, to honor God. But there I am. I'm tithing in sin. What about praying? You ever prayed in sin? No faith in it at all? I have. How does that happen? Because when you tithe, you don't believe that God is in love with you, that He has already blessed you. And so you just want to honor Him with what He's done for you. See, you providing by your own hand with no faith in Him at all is a problem. And here's the question. Why do you trust Visa and MasterCard more than you trust Jesus? Why do you believe that Visa and MasterCard will provide for you what Jesus won't. Well, people say, well, yeah, but I need it right away. If you really need it right away, do you not believe that God loves you enough to give it to you right away? That Visa, MasterCard, American Express are more certain than Jesus? Listen, I'm telling you, the reason I can talk to you about this is I've been in that place. I don't believe God loves me enough to get it to me. So I'm going to do it myself. That's a problem. And if it's showing up in any area, it's going to try to creep its way into a lot of different areas. Now, we've already talked about this at length, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. But you need to realize, next time you sin, ask yourself this. Don't just try to run from it. Look at it. Why did I do this? What was my reason for doing this? And I think you'll find that you weren't trusting God for Him and His love to provide for you. Well, what's the reverse of that? I believe God's love. Well, what does that mean? It means that I believe He can provide it for me even today. I believe that He can provide it for me without me having to pay interest charges. That's awesome. That is awesome. Now, let's talk about something else, though, that uh, not believing the love of God holds not believing the love of God puts you in an adversarial relationship with God and now what do I mean by that have you ever heard people pray well let's use this scriptural example here and then we'll we'll talk about it now notice what the devil says you shall not surely die verse 4 you you shall not surely die Verse 4, right? 
For God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You know, let's think about this for just a second. How do you take two perfect people and convince them to go against the one who has provided everything for them? How do you do it? You can't tempt them with fame because they're the most famous people on the planet. You can't tempt them with money because they own the planet. <laughs> um, what, what do you, how do you get them? How do you get them to sin? How do, how do you get them to be tempted to go against God? You begin to convince him, them God is not really out for your good. He is against you some way. He doesn't want you to be like him. He's jealous of you. He's withholding from you. And you need to protect yourself even from him. And you get into an adversarial relationship. People say, well, no, 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 that's not true. Let me, okay, let me ask you this. When you pray, is he your adversary in prayer? And listen, please don't give me the religious answer of, well, of course not. No, no, I want you to be honest. Let me ask you this. When you go in, do you try to make him feel guilty? This is one of the diagnostics of whether you believe the love of God. Do you go into his presence trying to get him to feel sorry for you? Let me tell you what a worm I am. Let me tell you how bad I am. Let me tell you. Let me cry some crocodile tears, Jesus, so you can see how bad I'm hurting. I need to impress upon you the seriousness of this situation, then God is your adversary. You don't believe He just loves you and would just help you. He's your adversary. And so what are you doing? You're trying to get Him, you're trying to manipulate His feelings. And He does have feelings. He's easily touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But you're, why are you doing that? Let me ask you a question. Do you fast and declare a hunger strike in order to get God to help you? Do, is that why you fast? Now, I fast. I believe in fasting. You can tell I need to fast a few more meals. But uh, is that why you fast? To get God to do something? Then He's your adversary. Do you feel as though you have to stay up all night, bawling and squalling, crying out, in order to get Him to move? He's your adversary. How do you pray? Listen to what you say. Do you think he's part of the problem? If you do, you don't believe in the love of God. If you are sitting there trying to convince God, who has given everything for you to help you, you don't understand, know about, or believe how much God loves you. And that's exactly what Satan did to these two perfect people with absolutely everything. Let me talk to you about this God who does not want you to be like him, who doesn't want you to have this knowledge. It is withholding from you. And now you need to take care of yourself. Now we might have covered this before, but here's an interesting thing about this temptation. Now notice the temptation. They do not want you, he, he doesn't want you to be like him and he doesn't want you to know good and evil. That's the thing, right? God is against you. He is not for you. Even though everything you see here, he gave you freely. Even though he provided for you everything. I don't want to talk about everything he gave you. I want to talk about what he didn't give you. I want to talk to you about lack. And I want to motivate you by what you are missing. Here's the funny thing about this temptation, though. You will be like God. He knows that you will be like Him if you eat of this tree. They were already like Him. Remember what God said when He created them? Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. 
they were already like him. Well, that you would have knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge of good? What, what does God say with great repetition in the first chapter of Genesis? God created and saw and it was, say it with me, good. And he said, and God created and saw it was good. And it was good. So let me ask you something. Did they have knowledge of good? I mean, if you looked around everywhere, wasn't everything they saw good? 100% good? Absolutely. So they are already like God. They already have the knowledge of good. So what did they gain by reaching out and believing that God was against them? God was withholding from them. What did they gain? The knowledge of evil. That was not something the Father wanted for them. He never wanted them to know it. People say, well, yeah, but if you don't have evil, then you can't understand the good. Um, nah, I, nah, that's bull. You can go from good to better to best. And, it can, and with God, it just keeps getting better. Do you know that your first day in heaven will be your worst day there? On the other side of it, did you know that your first day in hell will be your best day there? <laughs> Think about it. Your first day in heaven will be your worst day there. Because in a million years, you're going to look back and say, wow, I thought that first day. Now, you'll walk in into heaven and you'll think, this is awesome. This is better than anything I've ever known. And then a million years, you'll wake up, if, if we sleep, and you're going to look around and say, this is better than everything I've ever known. Do you remember those bad old days, that first day we walked into heaven? Man, that is co terrible compared to how good we've seen God is over these last million years. It's not that your first day is going to be bad. It's just that in comparison to God's goodness, it'll be the worst day that you'll ever spend there. Because it just gets gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder every day. Now see, here's the thing. How is it that you become convinced? How do they become convinced? I need to provide for myself. God is my adversary. Very, very simple. They did not believe the love that God had for them. Now, did they know about it? Of course they knew about it. From the very day they were born, they had an entire planet that was filled with the goodness of God. And it was a free gift. Here, have dominion. My child, I love you. I have longed for this moment to fellowship with you, to walk in the cool of the day with you. This is awesome. We're going to be able to work on this planet together. This is phenomenal. Now, there is this one tree. I'm just going to tell you, don't eat of that tree. Because in the day you eat of it, it'll kill you, boy. It'll kill you. Don't touch that tree. But you can have every other tree. One tree, you can't eat of it. But this 10,000 other trees, eat as much as you want, boy. Eat as much as you want. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? Isn't this awesome? Do You know, the Bible talks about how the stars would sing to, to, uh, to Adam. I mean, everything was just gorgeous. It was beautiful. And Adam threw it away. Why? Because he didn't believe that God loved him. Do you know that Adam and Eve could have looked at the devil and said, what are you talking about that God doesn't want us to be like him? God is in love with us. Look around. Everything we can see, feel, and touch was freely provided to us by our Father. He has been so good to us. And you're trying to tell me somehow he's withholding from me? Let me tell you something. He is so in love with me that if he didn't give it to me, then I must not need it. Because if I had need of it, if it was a blessing at all, he is so in love with me, he would have already provided it. So no, I don't want to eat of your stinking tree. 
And I don't believe you when you try to tell me God does not, is withholding anything from me. God is in love with me. God wanted me. God wanted to fellowship with me. He wanted to walk with me. My father would never withhold anything from me. You are a liar. You get out of this garden. Who would have fixed it? If they would have just believed. God is so in love with me. He would never withhold anything from me. So, if you... Do not believe God's love. You will end up in an adversarial relationship. It'll show up in your prayer life. It'll show up in the way you relate to Him. It'll show up in the way you relate to people. And that is dangerous. You never, ever want to see God as your adversary. You know, this is one of the reasons, this is so important. This is one of the reasons that we want to get this free devotional to you. Uh, And we also have these other materials uh, available to you. Now, I do believe that there's a package deal available where, I mean, you get this for free, but I think, um, I think these are like all three of them for $50 or something like that. But go to the website, fighttowin.tv. But you need to hear these things, and it's a suggested donation. If you don't have the money, uh, con- uh, shoot us an email. We'll at least send you the first messages of each free. But you need to hear these things every day, you need, especially if this is new to you. Now, I want, you to, uh, I want you to come right back. I've got some important messages. I want you to come right back after this. I want to pray with you. To receive your free gift from Kurt Owen Ministries, visit our website or call us at 1-800-215-0428. Thank you for coming back and allowing me to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to reveal to my friend that you are not their problem. You are not withholding from them. You are not their adversary. That everything that they could ever need and want in life, you desire to do for them exceedingly and abundantly above all they can ask or think. Father, I'm asking you to teach them by your word and by your spirit today how to cooperate with you and with your love so that they can receive everything you purchase for them by the blood of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that this revelation knowledge flows to them this very day. I also ask you to help them with the situations that are testing and trying them right now and let them know you didn't cause them. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you very, very much. I'll see you next time. Remember, Jesus is risen. Victory is assured. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. I'm going to ask you to do something very important today. Will you partner with this ministry and with this broadcast? As you know, we, we, even with our materials, their suggested donation, or we just give them away free. Our partners help us do that. Wouldn't you want that to be seed to your account in heaven? Wouldn't you want to have that harvest when you walk through the gate and God says to you, look at all these lives you touched. And he says, you did this through your partnership with Kurt Owen Ministries. Please partner with us today. 